Good. Uh, yes. So um, we are aware that our topic is to be on animals, and in the case of many of you, your pets, those beings that you bring into your homes and have relationships with, so important to so many of you, and quite an isolated romance, the relationship with a pet. So instead of your broader relationship to the animal kingdom, as it were, your relationships with your pets are often the way that you have a deep, trusting, and loving bond with an animal, and that is a doorway to far more than you can imagine. For the reason we wanted to bring animals and pets into the conversation at this point is they themselves are deeply sensory and intuitive. Now, they may not be intuitive in the way it would look to you, uh, for they are not using human language and the faculty of the mind where language is concerned in the same way that you are. That is fairly unique to the human, although there are certain species on your planet who have a very developed language. It just looks different uh, than yours. No, why we bring them up is because they are deeply connected to the realms of energy uh, through their sensory bodies and also through their ability to see through what many humans uh, cannot. So, for example, we will turn our attention to your pets. Uh, we have referred to this before, uh, but pets are wonderful energy movers in a house. So, if you have a pet that is free roaming in a house, and we are aware some of you have pets that are a little more contained or caged for various reasons. If you have a free roaming pet, and we will here choose dogs and cats as the primary example for you, they are wonderful at moving the energy in a house, and specifically the lower parts of the house. So it is not common that many of you get down on your floors and move around a lot, uh, but it is common that your feet are walking pathways through your houses all of the time. Well, these little beings with their mm, mm, way of navigating your house are constantly clearing the energy in the lower parts of your homes as they run around the house and roll around the house and exist in that realm. So even your larger mm, dogs, for example, are still covering areas that very few of you inhabit with your mind. So number one, it is quite nice for your pets that your minds are not mostly living on the floor in your house, for it leaves that realm of your place of life and living uh, fairly unencumbered from the human mind. If you were to measure the frequency of a house where a pet is present and then one where a pet is not, you would notice that the energy is far more, shall we say, uh, circulated and energized rather than stagnant. This is not a better or bad thing for those of you who don't have pets and are suddenly panicking that your house energy is stagnant. Well, all we mean is the life and the being of that pet is not only running around your house and generating its own energy and generating energy through its relationship with you, your pets are very tapped into the spirit realm. Some of them can see uh, other beings, other elemental energies in and around the house. Uh, you will notice sometimes your pets get very focused on something that they seem to be seeing that you can't see, and there are many pets that are able to perceive and pick up on this. But even those who do not see it or understand what they are perceiving in form, they are deeply connected to it through their spines. Their spines are the parts of their bodies that get signals uh, from everything around them. And so whenever the energy changes in a house, uh, you will notice uh, that a pet will have a response. So for example, mm, pay attention to the people that your pets like and feel safe with uh, when someone enters the room, and pay attention to the people that your pets back away from, stay away from, or leave the room when they enter. They are deeply sensitive to energy. So assuming your pet is well adjusted and balanced and not dealing with trauma from humans or abusive times in their life, a pet that is well adjusted will give you good indications about how safe or welcome they feel by the energy of another person. Now, 
We should clarify here that some people are just not trained to see pets as people. They just don't see it that way, so they ignore the quote-unquote animal. And that, of course, is great, uh, greatly risky for the animal, for if they are ignored, if their spirit isn't seen, especially as they are usually smaller than all of you as humans, uh, they are at risk. So in those cases, the pet will leave the room for those reasons. They do not feel safe, not because they are under threat, but because they are not seen. That is one response they will have. But the other response is the senses in a pet uh, can tell you a lot about a human being who has agendas they are perhaps not being open or honest about, or are knowingly or unknowingly concealing from you. Pets feel energy and they feel the heart energy in a room very acutely. It is why so many of your pets are like your children and your babies. Uh, they are. Uh, there is no great difference. It is just uh, an interspecies relationship and love. That is all. So the other side that we want to bring to your attention about your pets is many of you have been around with these beings before. And it is not necessarily that your, shall we say, dog or cat will be your reincarnated grandmother, for example, but what can happen for pets, and happens quite commonly, is that they start to tap into not only the aspects of you as a human personality, but they also have relationships with all of your beings and guides. And just as it is the case that a loved one who passes over, who was very important to you, can become a part of your guide team. At least some of the time they are present watching over you and paying attention and helping where they can and sending messages or signals. Perhaps the song that they used to love comes on the radio whenever they are present and they use this as a way of reaching you. It is also true that your pets pick up on your guides. They pick up on your guide teams. Again, not necessarily in a highly conscious way, but they are dealing with the totality of you. They are dealing with you, the sensory being, not you, the human being. You may be speaking to them from the vantage point of being a human parent to them, uh, but they are actually in relationship with your aura. So if uh, your pet starts to remind you of uh, someone that you knew before who has passed over and you wonder if they are the reincarnation, we will say that most pets do not necessarily take on mm, 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 human reincarnations, but uh, they are uh, wired a little differently. Uh, they do tap into the group and the team around uh, those of you who are mm, 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 especially sensitive and intuitive. They tap into those aspects of you and they reflect and relay them to you. It is not completely out of the question that those who have been incarnate as humans reincarnate as animals and pets. It is not completely mm, 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 unknown or unheard of, but it is less common these days. Uh, there was a period in human history where that was taking place a little bit more uh, between the 10th and 20th century, uh, but at this point it is not so common, for it is not so needed. Uh, you see, as you are becoming more multidimensional in consciousness, none of you are quite so fixed that you need to come back as one soul into an animal's body. You get to tap into the consciousness of the animal through the ethers. So a literal physical reincarnation is not necessarily needed. But this is why so many of your pets will remind you of people you have known and loved. They are reflecting that back to you and you are seeing that in them through the love you feel for them, the connection you have with them, and the energetic imprint that takes place between the two of you. Many of you have heard that your pets and animals will, shall we say, reflect or become you. And this is partly true, but you will notice they only do it when you're around. Ha! Huh. So when you're not there, they will not behave in the same way. It is why uh, someone who mm, either is in your household or looks after your pet has a very different experience of them when you're not there. It is not to say they will not have characteristics that are set, but Human pets learn to communicate with their human just as you learn to communicate with your pet. It is not through language per se, but it is through energy. And they will 
place their attention and their focus on you in a certain way in a moment of interaction that you then perceive to be their character. But actually, if you were to privately observe them alone uh, for a few days when you weren't in the room, you would see all kinds of sides of their behavior uh, that they do not need to employ when you are not around. So your pets are their own vast entities. Uh, they are far bigger than the bodily being you often see them as, but it is very important as a bridge, especially in recent times, recent centuries, human consciousness has reached a point where the love can get even stronger and deeper for more people within their animal relationships. Now, there have always been those of you who have incarnated on the planet as guardians of the animals. You came here as a guardian of the animals, and it is animals that are your favorite, are your mm, most understood group. You might find humans quite baffling, bewildering, or disappointing. Uh, so you come back as a guardian of the animals, often because you have had your own incarnations in and around the animal kingdom. You haven't always been incarnate as an animal before, uh, but energetically you've been working with bringing balance to the animal kingdom when you are not incarnate as a human. So you reincarnate as a human to see what you can do and see how you can advocate. This is why your lives between the lives can be so important. You may have a life before you incarnate as an animal advocate where you spend a great deal of time understanding the path of animal welfare on the planet and what is missing and what is needed so that when you come back, you can help to move the timeline for the animal kingdom in a favorable direction. For animals are meant to go with you. You are seeing at the moment a great deal of extinction events that do not need to be happening and that have been somewhat manipulated. Uh, so as more of that is understood in the coming decades, there will be even more of you who will advocate for the well-being of the animal kingdom and species that are not human on the planet. But pets are the bridge and the doorway to that. They help open the human heart to something beyond the self, which in turn is a spiritual uh, moment for the human being. For you are quite good at loving or accepting that which looks like you, uh, and you actually need to go far beyond that to enter multidimensional oneness, which we will talk about shortly. And so pets are a wonderful bridge to not only the other world, but to love. They are a bridge to a purer part of you that is a little more free of your mind, where you recognize the vulnerability and the strength in these beings that bring you so much joy. And it reminds you of a true bond that still has dependency, by the way. Some of you idealize your pets a little too much. They are dependent on you, so of course they are bonded to you. But there's nothing wrong with that. That's how life works. That's how humanity works. Uh, but what we are saying to you is those bonds can be so deep and can be so healing for those of you who are aligned with animals in that way. For it is free of some of the human drama, human conflict, and human restriction. It is a very pure relationship that many of you get to have. So uh, we just wanted to take a moment to ask you to sit with and consider your relationships with your pets and animals in a slightly wider way. For there is so much going on in their, those relationships, just as there is with other human beings. The difference is they are wired for the sensory. They can't not be wired for the sensory. And the only time uh, pets' senses get uh, shut down in a way that is, mm, shall we say, detrimental, is when they are over-controlled, over-contained, or uh, we will say over-pampered. Mm, when they have been so reduced in their faculties to look after themselves uh, that they don't have to pay attention to anything, they can become what you might uh, call a little zombified in their awareness, for they don't have to do anything. Now, the role of the pet is already uh, a reduction somewhat for the animal, for uh, the animal that used to be roaming in the outside world uh, fending for itself is suddenly domesticated. But what we will tell you is this, domestication of many of your animals and your pets gives them an entirely experience of consciousness. 
an entirely different experience of consciousness. It gives them a chance to have a very different experience of who they are and elevate their own consciousness in a different way to if they were in the outside world. Not better, not worse, just different. And so, um, while it is not always the case that uh, all pets know which humans they are going to, uh, anyone who chooses to um, be in and around a pet that incarnates is having a fascinating view of the human, meaning uh, the teams of guides uh, that are around pets are a little different, but it is a wonderful way to observe the human being when you see them in relationship with a pet. So some of the guides who have spent time with humans and their pets stay on the side of the pet so as to observe human interaction. And this can inform a great deal about love. And many, before they have reincarnated as a human being, have spent time observing this relationship between pet and human in order to access a little more of the purity of heart and of love that exists in those relationships before incarnating so as to hopefully bring a little more purity of heart and love to all relationships on earth. And that is the gift of your relationship with animals. It expands the love, the connection and the bond that is possible. And for any who sees animals as other or feels afraid because they do not understand the species or how to interact, it is a shame for to be able to fully love another being in spirit, not necessarily because they are a human, is to be able to trust, know and love spirit. And that is what the bonds between species help you represent and create. You get to create multidimensionality. You get to create love free of some of the conditions and the rules that are placed upon the way that humans can create love with other humans. Good in peace and in love to all. For those of us who are sensitive, intuitive, or walking a spiritual path, it is our practices and the support that we have in our life that often is the key to how well we can walk through life. Nine years ago, I created the portal to be an answer to that need for members of my community who wanted to go more in depth with my work. And while my work is still very much a centerpiece of the portal, we have now added other teachers, other voices, other offerings, so that the portal can become a well-rounded place for you to receive nourishment and be uplifted, shifted and supported every single month. My aim with the portal has always been to offer you as much value for your membership as possible. And I feel like in the last year or so, we have really been able to maximize that. So we look forward to welcoming you to the portal and we hope it is a place that can nourish your mind, your body and your soul.